Hi everybody, it's Laura. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this project going. We're going to use this button. Um, I'm not sure where I got it. It was in my stash and I found more like it at Walmart. So I may have, you know, picked it up. God knows where. I've had it for a while. I have no clue where I got it. I'm also going to use this tiger iron. It is so pretty. Where am I at and why does it seem like I'm zoomed in? <laughs> but I'm not. Um, so we're going to do that. This is going to be more of a masculine bracelet, but it doesn't have to be for a man. And then I'm going to use some of this gorgeous um, striped agate that came in January's box. This is a Bargain Bee box tutorial. So if you haven't figured that out, Bargain Bee box is a monthly beading subscription and I'm using two millimeter cord. Um, and it is um, $23 a month shipped to your door and um it's taken you know i use a prepaid card so it comes out of my off my card about the midnight on the 19th so um it's really good and then it sh gets shipped to you about the first second or third of the month you it gets shipped to you and um depending on the post office, how long it takes to get to you. Um, yeah, and it's anywhere between, they say 65 to $80 in value, but usually it's $80, right around $80 or just above. January's was phenomenal. Um, and um, you get sometimes gemstones, precious, semi-precious stones, um, beautiful curated box. Um, and you get to try out new things that you may never have thought of buying for yourself. And you also get some high-end findings, which is amazing. So, uh, I know a lot of people don't like getting findings, but especially for beginners, it's great. You also, when you join, get um, in your, well, I know when I joined in my welcome letter was a 30% off coupon to start me out with. So I didn't have to wait for my first box to go shopping. So um, I do have a coupon code that'll save you $2 off on your first month subscription. Um, that's here on the screen. And then you go into the uh, notes on the video. Um, just click more underneath the video and then you might have to click more again because there's quite a bit of information below and you'll see um, where I talk about bargain bead box and then uh, there will be a link you just click that and when you go to check out you put in um, the coupon code dragonfly2 all capitals with the number two so what I'm doing today is we're going to need about, I'd say, because I'm going to make this a bigger bracelet, um, oh, I'd say about 48 inches, so I've got about 50, um, and I use leftover for other things, so I'm not worried about, um, if I have leftovers, because this is 10 millimeter beads instead of the usual six or eight. We do want it to be closer to the um, 50 inches. This has a really good size shank, but it still won't fit two strings, two, two uh, pieces of cord. I am going to, one end of these, this has already got a, I think, or, oh, I use the piece of the snap. There we go. We're going to take our button and I'm going to look and see. 
So I'm going to put this on. I think that'll be fine. And just gently bring it all the way down to the middle. This came from Walmart, so I'm going to get bits of black on off from it. A little farther and we're going to bring it right to the middle so you see this one is going to set off center which is fine so it doesn't really matter which way we do this because when you wear it you're going to turn it whichever way you want your buffalo this way or your buffalo this way it doesn't really matter just that when you go to knot this you want to make sure that you're knotting this um, so that your knot comes to the edge of this we're going to do the snake knot let's see if I can remember how to do this um, I'm going to make a loop let's see this loop goes this way. Let me pause you and let me think about how my loop has to go. Find the pause on this one. Ah, where's my pause? Whoops. Okay, sorry guys. I had to stop and think about how did I do that? And I actually did the first loop. The first knot. So we're going to make a loop this way with our right hand. Um cord we're going to make this loop like this so it's crossing over itself and we're going to hold that in our right hand we're going to take our left cord and we're going to bring it up through that loop like that then we're going to take our left cord and kind of put it around our hand this way it's out of the way and then you see this space right here we're bringing that left cord up through that space and we're going to start drawing it up. It will pull this cord around our hand and it's going to create kind of an infinity knot. We're just going to start drawing both of our tails. The right tail draws up the left side. The left tail will draw up the right side and it is just that simple just like that now I know I didn't get into the entire list of what we needed and that's kind of my fault I wasn't um, thinking ahead we are also going to need our needle and our upholstery thread. I had the Coates and Clark um, upholstery thread. It is the um, um, I can't remember the size of it, but if you go to Walmart, you want to look for the upholstery thread. This is nylon, and we are going to need more than an arm span. So you're going to wingspan, you're going to put your arms out all the way. And I like to bring probably another half a wingspan up. So I'm going to do that much. I'm going to get my thread scissors out. And I'm going to cut that. I'm actually going to put, ah, they don't quite fit close but no cookie and then I'm going to get um, a size 10 needle would be great because uh, these have a pretty big hole in them or we can actually just use um, the big eye needle would be fine I'm going to put my thread back away one thing I didn't locate while I was putting stuff away was my new thread. So we're going to draw this thread down so that we have it pretty much in, not in half in half, but pretty close. We want a good sized tail. 
and we're going to get all of our excess thread out of the way here set our needle down and the reason I have two out is because I wanted to break up that green color with one of the other 10 millimeter beads off and on so we're going to get a bunch of these out okay um, we're going to start by taking in my sleeve pulled this so we're going to take and we're going to tie a knot on the left side and we're going to want to leave a really good sized tail because we're going to want to sew this back through um, probably a good 10 inch tail or so we're going to tie um, an overhand knot right up close there and then we're going to tie another overhand knot bring it down I'm not going to tie it snug tight but I do want it tight um, you know what those are 10 millimeter beads what have I got dark that I can put with them that might be really close how about you know what that would look really nice I want to step up because that is a really big bead and we're going to start stepping up and this is what we're going to do we're going to take I think these are like a three millimeter um, bead and we're going to put one let's see how one looks or if I can go two I'm just trying this out I think we can go two there And the reason I'm doing this is because that's a pretty big spread and you'll have a wide open space. If you don't, so we're going to ease this down away from that knot just a hair. No, I think we'll do one and then step up to two. So let's back him back out. So you're beating with me as we go. And I'm going to go, I'm coming from the top, oops, chasing him. I'm going to go over, I'm coming underneath, we're going to push this bead down, and we're just going to come under, and we're going to get that bead in place. But I'm not going to draw him down because I'm going to take this thread. I also want to put that through that bead. I may need to just do it with the needle. Nope, he came out. He's right there. I'm doing this because I want to pop that knot into that bead. So now we're going to tie, uh, bring it down. We're going to snug this and that pulls that knot into that first bead. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of wrap it around up here where the button is to keep it out of the way. It's going to take a few wraps because it's being stubborn. We just don't want this tail in our way. And then I'm going to take two on the next one. So I'm going to thread on two of these. Bring them down to the work. We're coming over. And then I'm going to have to fight with that. And then we're coming under, going through both of these beads. Coming under the other side, that other leather, coming out. We're going to shove these all the way up. 
and then we're going to tug that tight. Now we're going to start adding the um, tiger iron. Whoops. Yes. I was like, oh, I forgot to go through, but we're already there. So we're going to bring our tiger iron down. You see how that steps that tiger iron into place instead of there being a big gap? Going down after I bring this over, I'm going under that leather, through the bead, under the other side, and out. Going to get that thread out of the way. Push this thread up into place. It works better if you're laying it down. I'm going to do two of these, varying what colors are going on. Well, I'll pick that up later. Uh, let's see. Let's go with this one. So no matter what size you do, you can do this in any size, with any size leather. Um, just know what size bracelet you're making. And then follow these steps. It's real easy. Oops, I picked up that extra thread right there. So I want to backing back out of it. I caught my other thread, so that's what happens when I pick it up. I, you want to make sure that if you're picking it up, you're catching, not catching your other thread. And if you do, just kind of slow down, unhook yourself, push your beads into place, bring them tight, and then I'm going to add for some color variation one of these 10 millimeter um, striped agate. Find the hole. And I do need to move my thread. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Bring it down. Push the bead down, go through the bead all the way across, pull it, now with this size bead I will be going through these back up through before I finish this off. I'm going to finish this and bring you back. Okay guys, I don't know if I'm recording. Going. Okay. So I've added on uh, three, six, nine, twelve big beads. These are ten millimeters so it won't take as many. Um, I've gotten this last step on sorry about it waving and I am going to put my knot I'm going back through just like we did before over the top that's why I wanted to use this bendable me needle through that bead I'm going to push it up just a little bit following the same path that it had taken before Pulling it all the way through. Pull it 
pulling it snug back underneath I don't know Alan's leaving so you can hear the car and then I'm going to um, use this thread bridge right here and I'm going to create one of my knots so I'm going to whoops I've caught up with the button there I'm going to come around it and then I'm going to take my needle and go under the thread bring my needle so it comes like this I'm going to pull that back tight and then I'm going to make a loop go through my loop to make the knot make my first knot now I'm going to come back um, around let me see where's my thread come from okay because when I do this I want to go back through here but I want to follow the knot so I need to come under I know I want to come over because you're going to want to follow that um, the way the thread traveled and then we're going to pull so that that knot goes inside of that bead and we're going to go under and into the next two beads from below this way you're not creating a whole lot of um, thread um, be easy if I turned it over to do this and then come out to the top bring your thread through snug it bring it back up around to the top and then we are going to create a knot so we're going to come back around using that thread bridge make sure we get our thread where we want it got it around the wrong bead there we go and snug that down now we've created two knots I'm going to go and create or go back through this bead and we're just going to come out underneath and then we can tie this off Let's give it a snug I am going to go back through with a second piece of thread um, you can just follow your thread and go back through these beads to help strengthen but you want to make sure that you stick with your thread path and that's probably what I'm going to do just to give them extra strength and I'll be right back okay I believe it's filming yes I have gone all the way back up through and I've created a knot in a couple other spots and I've created another knot there, double knot. We are going to make sure that we do not clip the wrong thread. And we're going to get this out of our way. And then we're going to take all this that we have wrapped vicariously around 
um, all of this and we're going to thread our needle and get this step done and out of the way. It is coming out of this upper one. So we are going to um, look and see where this thread goes. And it's coming, let's see if we can get back through there. If not, we can actually just, we can go through it again. Because this is already double knotted. We're going to come down and around and go back through it. This is just ensuring that this is not going to come undone right here at the top because this has been knotted twice we're going to get our pliers and go ahead and ease that needle through that like that and go ahead and clip like that and here's how that looks now we're going to go ahead and as you wear this, these beads will um, come into place. We're going to go ahead and make two more snake knots here at the bottom. Again, wrap your right cord into a loop, tie over the top, bring your left up through your little hole like that. See, so you've created a loop like this. You've got a space here. We're going to bring this cord around our hand out of the way. We're going to come up through that space we've created right here and make our first snake knot. Of course, it's short, so it kind of wants to not do its thing. Let's try that again. It did not want to do its thing because it is short right there. Come back up through, go around our hand, and I just let go of that cord. It's been a long day, guys. Come back up through here. So we're going to start, we're going to hold these so they don't take off on us again. Okay, this is not working right. Oh, because I forgot to come down under. Good grief, I forgot a step, guys. We're supposed to come down under and make our knot. Don't forget that step. Now we're going to draw this all the way up, work it all the way up to those beads. Good grief, you can tell I'm in a hurry. There we are. We're going to make one more. After I draw these tight, pull from here. Goodness, guys. Where was my head? Remember, come through our loop we made and then come down under and up through. There we go. Remember, our left tightens the right, our right tightens the left. Now, we're going to see how big this needs to be. For me, we need to go one more knot, so we're going to do that. And I know if somebody buys this, they're going to have a bigger wrist than me. <laughs> so we're going to make three knots here. So, just 
just like that. So it looks like that. Now we're going to see how big of a where we want our button to be. So we want to have it to come closed right about here. So I'm going to make a regular knot first. And let's see. Now remember, I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist and this will probably be for someone else. So we have like that. Now I don't have my glue out. So this would normally be glued. We're gonna make sure this is tight. I am going to do one snake knot here at the end. Oops, forgot to go up under. Around. Now you can add a loop of chain to this for an extension. When you do your last knot, you would want to have a loop of chain in there. You can add it with a closed ring would be best. And that would give you a way to extend your bracelet like this. Now that that is secure, I'm simply going to take my old clippers, not my new ones. And first I'm going to make one knot I was going to put dangles on these, but I don't know if it's going to be a bracelet for a man or a bracelet for a woman. So I opted out and I want this knot to be at a different length, maybe a little closer like that. And then I'm going to trim these off quite close. And the leftovers I'll use on other bracelets. But there you have a very beautiful bracelet for a man or for a woman. Actually like how it turned out. Um, very Western style. I wouldn't necessarily.